I had a wonderful relationship with Midjourney. We've shared many experiences and created a lot of memories over the last 12 months. And even one month ago, I renewed our commitment costing $300. So I was shocked, dismayed, and a little bit angry when I found myself banned. And when I tried to communicate with them to find out what had happened to our relationship, they just ghosted me. Hi, I'm Appy Dave and I'm going to share what happened, the ban that I got, the $300 that I lost, what I believe is a misdiagnosis and the frustration that I had dealing with mid-journey support. And then after that, I'm going to show you 16 beautiful alternatives to mid-journey. I've been using Midjourney since March last year, and I've created thousands of images that I've used a lot within my YouTube videos. But last year, I did end up switching a fair bit over to DALI 3, mainly because I found it easier to work with within ChatGPT. And I'd already done a video showcasing 200 image comparisons between the two different products across 50 prompts. And in my opinion, DALI 3, while not as good as Midjourney was a worthy contender. Last month I was talking at a tech summit and I needed some pretty good images for the presentation I was doing so I ended up reactivating my Midjourney account. Now one week later I found myself having to upgrade because I'd used up all the credits that I had there and I ended up spending $288. But it was great because the images I was able to generate for the tech summit presentation were just wonderful. Now, two weeks ago, I moved countries. I came over to Thailand and not long after arriving, I started getting this particular error. Creation failed on my Midjourney account. I headed over to Discord and saw this error that's saying accessing our services via automation, scripting or third party tools created a ban. Now I started doing a bit of research to figure out what was going on because I hadn't done any automation or third party scripting and people had come up with these issues banned due to billing not matching the home address. Okay, not my situation. Someone has talked about losing a $60 subscription and not being refunded. My situation is $288 because I spent it for a full year and I haven't been refunded either. Then we saw other sorts of issues with banning going on. And then this next one gave me a little bit of a clue to what might be the issue. This includes IP and email bans from Discord. So I headed over to an email and I wrote, I can't sign into Midjourney. I've checked the images. There's nothing that meets the fraud or the other issues that they listed. I'm an influencer and basically all the images that I do for YouTube. And that's important to understand because you can't do bad quality images on YouTube and get away with it. And what happened was I got this reply straight away from them saying severe repeated violations of terms and services, use of automation, scripting, APIs, engaging in reselling services. So none of this stuff was going on for me. And then we had this one, you should have received notifications in Discord informing you of this, that they would have appeared that you've interacted with a bot and copies should have been sent to you. Now I've not received a direct message regarding that, so I'm not sure what's going on. The other thing that they've stated here is, as per the terms and conditions, refunds are not issued on banned accounts. So I thought, okay, where do I go now? So as I reviewed the forums again, it got me thinking about this IP address ban. And the reason it got me thinking about it is that a year and a half ago, I came to Chiang Mai for six months. And while I was here, I signed up to an American e-commerce platform. About two weeks later, they sent me an email saying that I'd been banned and that I'd been banned for life. I could not get an account again. And I ended up in that particular situation, sending details of my passport and my bank account details. And then funnily enough, four months later, when I was back in Australia, I got a reversal. So that was a misdiagnosis going on. Now, two weeks ago, I found myself moving again back to Chiang Mai and I was going via the Philippines. So the three places that I find myself in are Australia, where I'm either in Sydney or Brisbane. I find myself in Philippines and I find myself in Thailand. I ended up sending a reply email to Midjourney stating that I hadn't violated any terms or conditions that I was aware of and that I travel and that means that I open on different computers 
computers with different IPs, my mid-journey account. And all they did was reply stating, we can't provide you with any additional information about your ban. Band users are not eligible for a refund. So to be honest, I was a bit gutted by all of that and quite angry that I'd spent money only about three weeks earlier and it was all lost and they won't even do the courtesy of communicating with me about it. Rather than get caught up in the resentment of dealing with mid-journey support, what I thought is it's time for a new relationship. And the good thing is there are many great alternatives out there at the moment. So what we're going to do is look at 16 different AI art generators, and we're going to use three images that I've used in the past. I've created these in mid-journey. I've used them in my videos. And with each of them, we're going to run them through the 16 AI art generators. We are going to need a prompt. So what I thought I'd do is take each of the individual images and we'll drag them straight into DALI 3. Once they're in DALI 3, we can actually ask DALI 3 to tell us what the image is about. But I'll give it a little bit extra context by giving it the original mid-journey prompt as well. And then when we run it through DALI 3, we get a prompt like this. So in this particular case, it's create an animated illustration of a smiling 30 year old blonde man with eyeglasses. And then a bit later on, it says, the style should be similar to modern animated illustrations with a clean and simple design. And what we'll do is we'll take that prompt and the reference image, and we're just going to run it through all 16 AI art generators. So the first two we'll look at is Night Cafe and Ideogram. Now Night Cafe has a nice clean user interface where you can select different styles, whereas Ideogram is really good at doing symbolic art and ideograms. So we've got two images here. They're looking pretty clean to me. Next, we'll look at Open Art and Designs AI. So Open Art has the ability to use multiple models. I think it has something like a hundred different models that you can use. Designs AI can be used for images, but it can also be used for logos and videos as well. Next to our Blue Willow, which is by LimeWire and Adobe Firefly. They're both producing really great images. We would expect that from Adobe, but this Blue Willow product is also pretty good. I better mention too that with Adobe Firefly, it's like Canva, so you have the ability to do a lot of other design tooling with that product. And that then brings us on to Fotor and Crayon. And Fotor is an interesting one because it's a graphics editing software. And their implementation of generative art is pretty good, I think. Then we've got Crayon, which I had a lot of trouble trying to get good images from it. So this is the first time we've come across an AI art generator that wouldn't compare to Midjourney, but everything else has been pretty good so far. Next, we have Dream Studio and Imagine. And Dream Studio has the ability to have multiple models as well that you can select from. And Imagine Art is a detailed illustration tool. Both of these are producing great images. Next, we're looking at Playground and Hot Pot. Now, Playground has advanced editing features while Hot Pot also has some editing capabilities. One of the things I noticed with this particular image is that to me, it didn't feel like the illustration style that was described in the prompt, but they're still great images. The next two to look at is Lexica and Microsoft Copilot. And Lexica in the past has been an AI art search engine. It's a great place to get inspiration, but they also have creation tools and we've used them here. And this is a tool I do want to deep dive into and there will be a video on that. As for Microsoft Copilot, it's essentially DALI 3. So whatever you're doing in ChatGPT, you can do here as well. The last two in the list are worlds apart. So we've got Leonardo AI and Diffusion B. Now Leonardo AI has a lot of advanced tooling and creativity that you can do within it. Diffusion B on the other hand is a local computer implementation. So in my case, it's running on the Mac and it uses stable diffusion. And I wasn't really able to get any good images out of this particular model. So for the prompt of the 30 year old man creative 
animated illustration. We've got 16 different variations here, and there are plenty of great contenders to go up against mid-journey in this particular case. What we'll do now is we'll move on to the next reference image, and I'll give you a little bit more detail about each of these applications as we go. We'll start by dragging the reference image over into DALI 3. We'll also use the original prompt from Midjourney, which had things like the style raw stylized 500. Now this won't be able to be used effectively in the other art generators. So the generation of the prompt is here. Create a realistic illustration of a woman in her 30s shown in side profile. And we get all that information and this is what we're going to feed into the 16 AI art generators. Moving over to the final overview with this reference image, we've again got a lot of great examples. Now if there's a particular tool that you want me to do a deep dive in, let me know. Now I am going to do a two or three minute video on pretty much everything that's here but there are a couple here that I'm going to use professionally with my YouTube videos and they're the ones that I'm going to deep dive into so let me know which ones you're interested in and I'll do a video on them. Now the first example we've got here is Night Cafe and Ideogram and both images are pretty good in my opinion. Let's talk a little bit about Night Cafe. This tool you can use Stable Diffusion or DALI 3. You've also got access to print on demand and can select different art styles. I'll tell you more about Ideogram when we look at the third reference image, but moving on, we can look at Open Art and Design AI. We've got interesting styles. Maybe the one from Designs AI isn't as good as the Mid Journey one, but the Open art one is quite impressive. The thing about this particular tool is that apart from image generation, it's pretty good with anime characters and it's also got a image upscaler. Moving on to Blue Willow and Adobe Firefly. Blue Willow is great as a tool. It has many different styles that you can work from. It's got some tools like background removers, blurs, 3D models. And one of its key advantages is that it's quick at generating images. Let's now have a look at Photor and Crayon. Now Crayon, like before, doesn't really do a great job of generating images, but Photor is really interesting because not only is it generating a good image, but it's a really powerful tool. So we've got photo enhancement like upscaling background removal in painting. It's also got realistic human face generation, so it can do things like skin tones, hair, accessories, those sorts of features which are really hard to do with general tools like Midjourney. It's got all the different styles of art that you might want to do, which you would expect from a lot of the image generations, but it can also do transforms from one style to another. Overall, if you want image generation, but you also want image editing, this might be a great tool to look at. Moving on to Dream Studio and Imagine, we've got good images being generated based on the prompt. Let's talk about Dream Studio. It's by Stability AI using the Stable Diffusion model. Now it's got all your text to image sort of capabilities. It can also do image to image, so you can take an image and alter it. And it's got capabilities like image upscaling. Looking now at playground and hot pot. So in this case, the images are pretty good. The playground has this really nice user interface and a very generous usage limit on a daily basis. It uses different models. It's got various tools and customizations, and you can also do image combinations, combining images together. Moving on to Lexica and Microsoft Copilot. So Microsoft Copilot, which is DALI 3, we're showing that here. Lexica is a search engine. Now it's got image generation tools. It's got a lot of ability to customize things and look at the history of images and adapt them over time. Moving on to the last two for the Japanese girl, we've got Leonardo AI and Diffusion B. And at this point, I was nearly giving up on Diffusion B. But Leonardo is an incredibly powerful image generation and AI generation tool. You've got capabilities like in painting, out painting, and magic erasers. You've got Control Net, which gives intricate image guidance. And the real-time canvas allows you to make modifications to the image quickly and easily. 
Now moving on to our last reference image, which is the line coming out of the clouds. Now you might have noticed in the last section that I talked a little bit more in detail about each of the image generators, but I only did one of them. Now I'll do the other half in this section. So with the image, we've dragged it into DALI 3. The original prompt was actually quite simple. It was an an angel lion emerging from ash. But with the image being dragged into DALI 3, what we finally get is create a powerful and dramatic illustration of a lion with angelic wings. Create a powerful and dramatic illustration of a lion with angelic wings emerging from a cloud of ash. So this is the prompt we're going to use for the 16 generators. So moving on to Night Cafe and Ideogram. In this particular case, I really love the image that Ideogram has created. Night Cafe is not too bad. Now, the thing about Ideogram is it's a powerful tool. It's designed for both amateurs and professionals. It's got preset image styles, 3D rendering, it's got community engagement and all the sort of options editing that you would like to do. But additionally, it's got a diverse range of visual elements and icons. And the other thing that you can do with it is work with text. So you can combine text, fonts, colors and different styles with the generation. So let's have a look at open art and designs AI. We've got pretty good images going on here. Designs AI is an interesting tool. Developed by the Imagine group, it's got a bunch of makers. So it's got a text, it's got a logo maker, a video maker, design maker, and speech maker. So something like the speech maker can be used for voiceovers. The other thing it's got are these pairers. So it's got font pairer, and color matcher. So an interesting range of tools with this particular product. Next, we'll look at Blue Willow and Adobe Firefly. We've got two great images going on here. Now Adobe's going to be a really powerful tool moving forward. So I guess its main competitor is Canva, but it has the ability to integrate into the rest of the Adobe products. One of the things it's got is this ethical AI. So it's all trained on images that it has the rights to. And then being a design tool, it has generative fill and expand. You can also do vector graphics with it. Move on to Photor and Crayon. Now Crayon has been a tool that I didn't get a lot of success out of it, but it might still be a useful tool for you to use for these reasons. It is a free tool and it has prompt predictions and suggestions. And with a little bit of work, you can get an image close to what you might want. Next, we'll look at Dream Studio and Imagine Art, and they're both producing great images. Now, Imagine Art is a pretty powerful tool. It's got different styles, image remixing, and advanced configuration. It can also do background removal and in painting. And we're looking at Playground and Hot Pot again, and these are now becoming leading contenders for myself. But let's talk a little bit about Hot Pot. So it's quite a versatile tool that you can use for image generation, but you can also use it for photo editing, headshots, and avatars. One of the other things it can do is text writing. So you can use it for your brainstorming and copywriting. And like tools like Canva or Firefly, it has templates that you can customize for social media. Moving on to Letsica and Microsoft Copilot. The Letsica image is really good. The Microsoft Copilot for me is something that you would use just the same way as you would use DALI 3 within ChatGPT. Now, if you're using Microsoft Copilot, you might not want to go any further than this. And if you really want to see a great set of examples of Mid Journey versus what Microsoft Copilot could do, you could check out the video that I've did last year where I did 400 images, 50 prompts, four images per prompt for Mid Journey and four images per prompt for DALI 3, where you can get a good side-by-side -side comparison between these two different products. And for the last two, Leonardo AI and Diffusion B. So the Leonardo image is pretty good. The Diffusion B, the thing about this tool is that this image that's done is okay, and it's free, it runs on your computer. So you have a lot of capability to produce images, but it doesn't necessarily create the best results. But some of the tools that are built into it, 
include inpainting, outpainting, and upscaling, and you can plug different models in. So if you know what you're doing, you might be able to get this to a much higher level of capability and just run it locally on your Mac computer in the case of Diffusion B. For Windows, I'm sure there's a tool that does something very similar. So there's 16 great examples of the line coming out of the ashes. We've also got the lady in her house, Japanese background, and the man in his 30s, illustration style, yellow background with his thumbs up. So even though I've been banned from Mid Journey, it's unfortunate. I wish they would look into the case. I've found that there are 16 awesome alternatives out there. So please like and subscribe. And if you're interested in videos about prompt engineering or AI, then let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. I'm Happy Dave.